Welcome to the JetBrains YouTube channel. In this video, we'll show you how to use Docker Compose with RubyMine for local development. We'll show you how to interact with Docker using the services tool window, how to build and run your application with Compose right from the editor, how to use the Docker service as a remote Ruby interpreter for running and debugging your application, and finally, how to connect to a database running in a Docker container. First, make sure that Docker Desktop is installed and running on your computer. We are using Docker Desktop for Mac in this tutorial. The next thing we need to do is clone the sample Rails application. You can find the link to its GitHub repository in the video description. To clone the application, click Get from Version Control on the welcome screen, enter the repository address in the URL field, and click Clone. RubyMine will then download the application and open it. First things first, we need to make sure that the IDE has established a connection to the Docker daemon. To do this, open the Preferences dialog and go to Build, Execution, Deployment, Docker. You can see that RubyMine shows Docker for Mac automatically and established a connection. Now let's see how to interact with Docker. From the main menu, select View, Tool Windows, Services. In the Invoked Services tool window, select Docker and click Connect. As you can see, we already have the Ruby image. Let's look at how to pull an image right from the IDE. Click the Pull Image button and start typing the image name in the Image Console tab. As you can see, completion suggests the required name. Press Command Enter to start pulling the image. We'll download the Postgres image, since it will be used as the base for the application's database storage. Now let's examine the docker-compose.yml file. As you can see, our application uses two services, web for the Rails server and db for the database. The web service uses an image built from the Docker file in the current directory. Let's take a look at the Docker file. As you can see, the image for the web service will be built based on the Ruby image. The commands below install the required libraries, gem, and JavaScript dependencies. Let's go back to the Docker Compose file and examine it. The tail command is used to keep the web service running because RubyMine uses the Docker Compose exec command to analyze the Ruby environment and add Docker Compose as a remote interpreter. If the web service is not already running, RubyMine runs it automatically with Docker Compose Run. We'll show you how to change this behavior later. In volumes, we map our local application to the specified container directory. Moreover, we add an additional mapping to use node modules installed in a container. In the ports group, we expose the 3000 port so that we can access our Rails application from the local host. We also add the ports required for the RubyMine debugger. Note that the RubyMine debugger needs the DBase and Ruby Debug IDE gems to be installed in the project SDK. Let's open the gem file and uncomment these gems to enable the debugging of our application with Docker. The final thing we need to do is adjust the database configuration. Open the database.yml file, comment the development group for SQLite, and uncomment the Postgre SQL to use the DB host. Return to docker-compose.yml, click Docker Compose Up, and wait until RubyMine builds and runs the application with Compose. This could take several minutes. OK, our application has been deployed successfully. From the Services Tool window, you can redeploy or stop your application or execute Docker Compose down. You can also run arbitrary terminal commands in your services right from the IDE. Right-click the web service and select Exec. Click Create and type Bash in the Invoke dialog to get a Bash shell in the container. For example, let's take a look at the list of installed gems. Now we are ready to configure the web service as a remote Ruby interpreter. Open the Preferences dialog and go to Languages and Frameworks, Ruby SDK, and Gems. Click Add, select New Remote, and then choose Docker Compose. Here, specify the web service as a remote interpreter and click OK. 
Then, select our newly created remote interpreter and click Apply. To work with the Ruby interpreter inside Docker, the IDE analyzes the Ruby environment by running specific commands inside a container, such as which Ruby, gem, env, and rb config. On the Ruby Docker integration page, you can select whether to execute these commands in a target container, Docker Compose Exec, create a new environment, Docker Compose Run, or use the dedicated service container for this purpose. Click OK to close the dialog. Note that RubyMine needs to take some time to download and index gems installed in a Docker container. This is required for Code Insight features such as code completion and navigation. Before running our application, we need to create a database on our DB host and run migrations. Let's reload our rake tasks first. Press Ctrl twice, start typing rake, and select the rake tasks command. Then run the db create command in the same way to create the database. And then run db migrate to perform database migrations. To run our application, we can use the automatically generated development rails configuration. First, let's examine its settings. Select Edit Configurations from the drop-down and open the configuration. In the Docker Compose group, you can see the options for running or debugging Rails applications. You can run a command in a container that's already running, use Docker Compose Up, or run a command in a new container. Click OK and run this configuration using the Run button. We can now open our application in a browser. Let's create a simple JetBrains user to make sure that everything is working. Click Stop to stop the application. This will also stop the web service. Before debugging, we need to check whether the server.pld file exists in the temp folder. Let's remove this file. Now we are ready to debug the application. Open the user's controller.rb file and set a breakpoint within the create action. Click the debug button on the toolbar to run the debugging session. Note that we need to update the spring configuration file to load the debugger into every forked process. Let's choose the project config. Open the browser again and create another user. When you click Create, the debugger pauses its session on a breakpoint and allows you to examine the state of the application. For example, you can see the past user parameters in the Variables pane, or you can use the separate debug console for this. Of course, you can step through the program to go to the next line, or enter the methods invoked on your way. The final thing we are going to show you is how to connect to our Postgres database running in the container of the DB service. Select the container in the Services tool window and switch to the Port Bindings tab. You can see that the 54333 local host port can be used to establish the database connection. From the main menu, select View. Tool Windows, Database to open the Database Tool window. Click New and select Data Source, PostgreSQL. In the Invoke dialog, we can configure the connection settings. We'll keep the local host setting and change the port to 54333. Let's switch authentication to user and password and try to test our connection. The connection failed since we didn't provide the credentials. Let's change the username to Postgres. Finally, let's specify the database name in the database field and test the connection again. As you can see, everything's OK now. Click OK. In the database window, we can open the user's table and preview its records. You can see that it contains our users created during the running and debugging of our application. 
If necessary, you can edit or remove records, execute arbitrary SQL queries, and many other things. And that's it. Thanks for watching.